so on, on the first point, I have to give credit to Dr. George Cahill, who is one of the legends of fasting or what they called at the time starvation science or research, where he found that, and Dr. Stephen Kunain, whom I've already mentioned, has confirmed some of these findings. You can have a person in a pretty solid state of ketosis, which, and I need to invoke millimolar here. If glucose is about five-ish millimolar, which would be considered about normal, and ketones are around two, let's just say two and a half, just for easy math. So ketones are half as concentrated in the blood as glucose is. He has found, he found that in that state decades ago, he published these results, already more than double what the brain is getting from glucose, it's now getting from, from ketones. So in other words, up to over 65% of the brain's energy is coming from glucose, or rather ketones. 65% of the brain's energy is coming from ketones, even though the ketones are at half the concentration of the glucose. Huh. So if we were to say the brain has any fuel and the brain is its own hybrid, relying on glucose and ketones primarily. And so to say that the brain prefers glucose, that's demonstrably incorrect because the moment ketones start to hit the blood, even when it's still at half the level of, of what the glucose is, the glucose is now accountable for more than two times. Uh, the, the ketones is more accountable than two times of what the glucose is feeding the brain. So if the brain prefers any fuel, it's obviously it's obvious that it has a preference for the fuel that is at the lower level, and yet it's still prioritizing as its primary uh, metabolite or primary fuel source. So that addresses the idea that the brain prefers glucose. 